welcome back to the Love of Christian Eagle Coaches Show. Carson Robinson alongside Coach Chris Softley. And Coach, coming off of a win last week in Week 1 over Kermit, 52-20 to here at Lena Stevens Field for the first game of the season, first home game, last home game for a while. Now we head on the road yeah. and uh, some road tests coming up for Lubbock Christian. But first, let's go over this 52-20 victory on Week 1. you got to be pretty happy about what you saw. But also, there's a lot of room for improvement, as usual, during week one play. So it's kind of a, a give and take there with the kids. Uh, what were your thoughts after week one? I told the boys after the game, I said, I think, I think we'll go ahead and say this was a solid win. Kermit's a good team, a lot of talent, really physical. Yeah. And I think, I think they'll have a strong season, there's no doubt. And our boys did some really good things. But, you know, there's that tension as a coach where uh, you just you feel like your boys... Uh, and your coaches that we can make every play, you know, and we we missed a couple, yeah. had some learning curve opportunities, um, conditioning wise. I think it was a good good first <laughs> game. We were sucking air a little bit. So overall, solid game. Uh, really grateful to come out and get a win. Great for a home opportunity. We had a great, uh, you know, just a great setup here with our with our weather and our fans. Uh, but we'll need to shore some things up and take some steps in week two, that's for sure. Yeah, I want to talk about the fans and the new stands, the new stadium look. Lena Stevens has never looked better. Yeah. Um, you know, the grass was green. The stands were pretty full for the first week of the season. Uh, that has to be exciting. And then it felt like I was in Mississippi State with all the cowbells that were, <laughs> that were ringing in the background. Yeah, you can uh, blame the moms on that. Yeah, yeah. That's... It's one of those things where it's a new tradition maybe that we're starting, mm -hmm. uh, that we have started, and uh, it's fun to be around this atmosphere, to play in an atmosphere like that, yeah. and in a game like that where you came out, you got up early. We go to the opening drive of the game, you know, you, you get the kick, you get the opening kick, you shake it right down, script looked good, everything you probably wanted to do in that drive happened, other than probably the two-point conversion not being made. <laughs> but uh, how did you feel after that opening drive? You know, we talked last week on this show about not knowing much about them as far as the two scrimmages and, and what maybe they held back and who they were really going to be in week one. And so felt good with the preparation we put in and the kids' execution. Like you said, right through the script, uh, whatever it was, minute 27 second drive and, and getting in the end zone. Really strong start. Felt proud of our O line. Thought they did some really good things. Uh, we do want the two point conversion back, but uh, we fixed that later on in the game. Yes. I don't know. Yeah, I think we, that was the only one we missed, yep. I think. But yes, a strong start. We we feel good about uh, where we're at right now and and the execution of our of our older kids. And then again, we talked about this. The young kids really get some great experience. And we weren't wondering this because we knew what we had coming in after Connor Lack and Carson Leatherwood left as the receivers, but mm -hmm. those in the media that are outside of this building were saying, who's going to fill those shoes? Luke Lee did a fantastic job mm -hmm. of that, and Luke Zuniga, the Luke squared, um, showed out the other night. I know Luke Zuniga's got one that he wants back, mm -hmm. but he ended up making up for it and getting the touchdown That's catch. Right. But Luke Lee looked really good on Friday night. Well, I was proud of those guys. We rotated a lot of receivers. And our running backs are our receivers as well. Yeah. And everybody did a great job in the program of, of accepting their opportunity when it came. And we talked to the kids about that. Our, our kids are pretty selfless, um, which obviously makes this job really fun. But the kids just know that your number may be called this week, and it may not be called for a couple weeks, but be ready when your opportunity is, is called. And, and then also blocking on the perimeter. Brady caught some swing yeah. passes and uh, backs on some scramble drills. The, just the opportunity to see those kids we say no block, no rock, and so they got to earn that opportunity. And, and, and these kids are workers, and, and they did a great job in week one. Love it. No block, no rock. That's I'm right. going to start using that on the radio. <laughs> there um, you go. Yeah, if, if anybody <laughs> wonders why their boy's not getting a ball, you know, yeah, check the yeah. block. Check yeah. how he blocked last You're time. You're probably not blocking. Watch the yeah. film. Um, we usually, I don't know if you'll still do it, the uh, stars of the week, players of the mm -hmm. week. Um, let's go through those two guys and or one guy, whoever it was. Yeah, so so Will Hawley is the is the guy of the week for us. Uh, I was hoping you bring him. Young up. man that has to move to center, and uh, he's really just a yes sir, no sir, yeah. do whatever you need coach. Plays linebacker for us, does a fantastic job. Kirby did a great job with some wrong way pullers. Uh, really tough concept at any point in the season, but certainly week yeah, one. week one especially. And uh, luckily we have uh, 
you know, a five-year player in Will Holly, uh, <laughs> yeah. playing linebacker for us, and so he, he did a fantastic job. He's our player of the week, and, and we're really glad that get to coach that guy. Yeah, Will Holly's that guy that you want in a program that you might only get once every ten years, mm -hmm. and you love having him for those four years yeah. because you take full advantage of it. The good thing is there's another Holly right behind That's him, right. And, and he had a pretty good night as well. He um, did. Coming in and, and doing some good things at running back and on the defensive side. He did. Ben, one of the guys gave him a, an I see you after the game, mm -hmm. and they said, Ben Ollie, you're my player of the game because you know every position on the field, and coach basically puts you out there and expects you to know every position on the field. <laughs> yeah. And I thought, you know, probably a little unfair, but we do. We, we, put, we put Ben probably at five different positions on Friday night. We had some cramping, had some first game injuries, <laughs> and Ben's kind of that guy that uh, just gets to be the utility infielder. And so, very grateful for him and his head knowledge of the game, and then again his his servant heartedness to go out there and, and play whatever role we ask. Love it, Christian gets that win, fifty two to twenty, and now we move to week two, and the season moves along, and you got to get rid of week one real fast because week two you got the number four team in the state in two A Division two in the Wellington Sky Rockets. A, a perennial powerhouse in the Panhandle and in the state of Texas. Um, just a team that's a, a hard-nosed, physical, any kind of West Texas terminology you can give, <laughs> Wellington you're, pretty much fits it, right? You're right. You're right. I, we said the same thing. They're, they're a hard-nosed, high-effort program that's going to run the ball right at your face mm -hmm. and make you like it. And <laughs> that's West Texas through and through. We're a team that we, we want to be known uh, from maximizing the opportunities we have and the abilities we've been given, Colossians 323. Well, they're a team that, that looks like they're doing that very thing. Yeah. And so we kind of challenged ourselves this week is what a great opportunity to play a high effort program and see how we stack up. Not not in terms necessarily of comparison, but, but more in terms of complementarianism of these guys are giving what, everything they got, let's make sure we answer the same call and let's let the chips fall where they may. It's going to be a fantastic game on Friday night. It will be uh, two teams full of high effort, high character kids, um, and I'm I'm excited to see what see what takes place. Whenever you look at this game on paper on Friday night, both of these two teams look pretty even. Mm -hmm. You got you got guys. They've got guys. Mm -hmm. um, they win a squeaker last week in in Oklahoma. They travel up to Oklahoma to play, mm -hmm. and against a bigger school in Frederick, Oklahoma. And they get a win there. So now you're both one and zero. What does Lovey Christian have to do to go two and zero against a very talented Wellington team? Well, I'd love to say stop the run. I don't know if that's, <laughs> I don't know if that's possible. You know, limit limit the damage yeah, that they do. Yeah. I, I think really the number one thing always is, is is the takeaways. And if we can take care of the football and and steal a couple, that's going to be big in the game for sure. And we probably play a little bit more of a risky offensive attack because we're putting the ball in the air. Um, and so our ability to be really efficient with the football is number one. And then, really, the truth of the matter is, if we can get ourselves in position pre-snap, get ourselves with the proper calls offensively and defensively, we're going to give ourselves a chance. There's going to be some damage that's done by their effort and their scheme just because of the way they're coached. Their coach yeah. does a great job. So no matter what, it's going to be a tight contest. But... I think if, if we're getting to the nitty gritties, I think you're going to see it one in the trenches. I think yeah. just think that's the truth of the matter is and, and that may not have always been our strength and, and may never be, but but we're going to try to we're going to try to put our best foot forward and, <laughs> and go out and get a win in between the in, in between the tackles. And you kind of have to against a team like that because, mm -hmm. like you said, they're going to line up. You know what they're going to do. Mm -hmm. Everybody that plays them every single year, they line up and they know what they're going to do. Right. You can stop them or not. That's mm -hmm. the key. And uh, a lot of teams have not been successful in that. We look to be successful in that on Friday night. Um, that game, 7 p.m. in Wellington, uh, right there off of, uh, I think they call it Skyrocket Boulevard in Wellington, there Texas. And uh, it should be a uh, very, very, very good game on Friday night. I mean, you're talking about two top ten teams in their divisions and their respective rankings. Um, I know there's some eyes around the state that are looking at this game as well as being one of the better non-district games of the mm -hmm. season in the smaller schools. So it uh, should be a great one. We're looking forward to it. I don't know y'all are looking forward to a JV game tonight. Yeah. And uh, we'll see how the JV stacks up with the JV Skyrockets as that game will be at Monterey High School because we've got too much rain. Thank you, Lord, for all the <laughs> rain this week. Um, very much needed here in West Texas. But 
the JV game at, at Monterey tonight. So we'll see how those boys stack up. And then tomorrow night on the road for the first time all year. And it will we'll just pretty much stay on the road That's for right. the rest of the year. Yeah, we go, we go three <laughs> hours. It's our second shortest road trip of the year. <laughs> yeah, the shortest one is yeah. next week. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Go to Wellington, then to Bovina, and then you get all the long road trips after that with a bye week in between. And Waco Riker, and then finally back here at home at Lena Stevens for homecoming against Munster Sacred Heart as district play gets started. But coach, it's uh, going to be a good one tomorrow night. Looking forward to it. We are too. I'll be ready about six fifteen nine <laughs> tomorrow night. We have some work to do. Yeah, it's a it's a great opportunity. We're really excited to play. Just a, a fantastic program. We're one of the top. They're one of the top programs in the whole state, regardless yeah. of the division. Yeah, and so that it's going to be a fun opportunity. Our kids are our kids are excited. They know the challenge, and uh, we'll see how we respond. So that game tomorrow night in Wellington. Catch it right here on the Eagle Sports Network on all of our platforms. So for myself, Carson Robinson, Coach Chris Softly, thanks for joining us. Till next time, go Eagles.